audio. If you haven't heard it today, let me be the first person to tell you that I love you so very much. Hey girl. Hey, how are you guys doing? So in this video, I'm going to do more than just like a catch up video because I guess in my other one, well one, I'm always just like crying in all my catch up videos, right? And I really want to avoid that. Um, so I think instead of how I'm going to, how I used to do like the catch up videos, y'all, I'm going to kind of like talk about what it is, like the lessons that I'm going through currently and how I'm processing the lessons. Um, it's rather than just me talking about like, oh, here's everything that's going on in my boring life and pretend to care about it, right? No, I didn't want to be able to, you know, share um, some of the lessons I'm going through. Hopefully might be helpful to some of you guys as well. Um, I do want to just bring this up now in this video. I don't want to talk too much about it. Um, it's the new moon of me making this video. Um, so one, let me know if y'all uh, did anything for the new moon. Uh, I personally didn't just because of... Um, distractions uh which leads me to what i was gonna say now um i did a community post uh celebrating the life of such a dear friend of mine melissa um she ended up passing away uh it was just kind of unexpected for me uh she lives in texas i live in washington i haven't uh she's, she's someone that i worked with similar to my other friend uh who some of you guys might recognize the name carrie uh from my live live streams she, uh carrie and melissa were two of the people the only people that i've kept in contact with uh since my first job and that was like uh I want to say it was like seven years ago now. Um, it's crazy to think about. I guess my purpose of me bringing this up is that I really appreciate all of you guys being so kind to me this week and just all the wonderful comments and even in my community post. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been able to um, be as active in the comments as I used to be. I'm definitely going to work on that more. Um, because it's like, I don't like ever interacting with you guys, um, or at least commenting. I always see, I see everybody's comments, trust, uh, but I don't want to ever respond to you guys without me actually being invested, right? I don't want, I don't ever like to just give like a surface level response to you guys and, and all that. I want to be able to like be into the response, right? I want to be fully involved in it and not whatever i think you guys get it but i apologize if you have felt um ignored by me because it's not my intention i promise you i've seen everything um and i have kept tabs with a bunch of you guys i know um with jack and what's going on with you jack i truly was thinking about you jack for a while um with, with you too so that was something that has been going on in my mind um, Azamon, uh, Azamon, one of the few people this week caught, uh, helped me in that, like, I accidentally uploaded, um, the Virgos reading twice, uh, but, um, he, like, called it out, and you're just like, oh, I think you, and it's just like, well, never mind, that's not this video, right, but I just wanted to say that I love you guys so much, I, um, it's been, uh, especially with what's going on in my life as well this was just kind of like the uh icing on the cake for me so being able to have your guys' support like i said it before but it truly is um it's, it's i really do appreciate it so thank you oh honey i said i wasn't gonna cry and we're not gonna cry honey because i'm so tired of all my videos where i'm just like crying i want to be able to just like make you guys feel good i don't like having to just like always um have to i don't like crying in all my videos because it's just i'm such an emotional person so it's kind of inevitable for me because i just feel so hard but um yeah let's go into the main purpose of this video so i didn't really write out like a, i don't i guess i don't ever write out a script for my videos which you probably can tell from how uh not well spoken i am but um in this video i i I'm trying to think of how I want to word this <laughs> without it being um, weird. So for since January, uh, the January has been really since January this year. I guess the start of this year. So scattered brained. Uh, I really have learned very quickly that this year has been the year to um, yes, more so demand respect and uh, hold people to a higher standard when it comes to how they treat me and how they speak to me. 
And then this goes with all aspects of my life, right? Again, I don't really want to talk too much in, in specifics, right? Just because um, I do have um, my family that watches and I don't want to have them um, feel bad. I don't want anyone to feel bad about whenever I'm like talking about conversation, like having an open dialogue about stuff, right? But the first thing, I guess, the first lesson that I had when it was uh, when it came to family and like expecting and holding family to a higher standard of how they will treat and speak to me because i feel like a lot of people can relate to this definitely let me know if you do have any type of like um uh, the similar family dynamic i would love to hear about how you guys uh manage and go through that and cope with that also let me just say <laughs> i don't know if you can see my breath but um yeah that was like the first thing and i thought that was going to be such a major lesson for me in that you know, especially when it comes to people who were adults in our lives when we were kids, uh, there is like a certain um, standard or expectation that I feel like is just generally upheld of where people feel like they have an excuse to not be as respectful as they should be and to just speak, it, speak to you in any type of way or treat you in any type of way, essentially taking you for granted. And I think this is a powerful lesson to um, go through and to really... For a lot of people, I don't know if you have struggles with your family right now, but truly, this helped me out so much. I, I don't even, like, I can't even think of a specific moment that really triggered it for me, but there's just, like, a moment of realization to me where it's just, like, so many of my issues, so many of my, like, my PTSD, my trauma behind how, like, the behaviors that I allow in my life and just everything, a lot of it... I couldn't fully overcome, I felt, for quite a long time. And I couldn't figure out why, right? And so for so long, I was just like constantly like revving in my brain. It's just like, what do I need to do? I don't get it. Um, because with the traumatic events, then uh, those traumatic events that led to me having like various PTSDs, like not wanting to be touched and all of that, uh, I knew where they stemmed from, but how I was going about accepting it was not from a place that was honoring myself. And that is something I really want everyone to do immediately, is to start honoring yourself. Um, and what I mean by this is that I was able to be at peace with, or so I thought, with certain events that happened in my life just because... I gave people the benefit of the doubt in my family because I was just like, oh no, there's no way that they wouldn't uh, want to neglect me or dismiss me or gaslight, you know, all that. I always just gave the benefit of the doubt. And because of this, and I also just didn't want them to feel bad. I didn't want them to be, I just essentially didn't hold them accountable. And I didn't realize how damaging that was until after... I got out of, like, I had that, like, weight released off of me through the realization of kind of, like, accepting that uh, <laughs> it's a choice uh, for people to treat you in a certain type of way. Here's the thing. I said in one of my other videos of where uh, the parent, our parents in our lives and people in our lives, the adults in our lives when we were kids, like, everyone, wait, who are you, the family that you're born into, uh, they're, they're just humans as well. The, you are not born into a perfect family, into a perfect, with, like, surrounded by perfect human beings, just like how you and I are now. I like how I said you and I, um, how you and I are now aware we're all going through our own issues and have our own traumas and PTSDs and all of that. It's no different for our families, no different for our parents, uncles, cousins, aunts, grandparents, all of that. And I think we kind of forget to acknowledge this just because of when we're kids, we just look up to these adults in our lives and you just see, the, think the world of them. You have such a childlike view of them because it's like, uh, why would they, you know, it's family, right? They were there when you were at your most vulnerable and it doesn't make sense for them to want to hurt you or neglect you or really just not consider your feelings or consider your presence as a human being. There's something I've like kind of noticed and it's easier for me to see it um, considering like how uh, not close with any of my family that I am uh, that 
the dynamic, the social dynamic and the behaviors that we allow in a family dynamic is just very different than how we would ever allow anything else in our lives and or one would hope, right? We never like, we can acknowledge a toxic friendship for us and we can acknowledge a toxic person, friend in our lives or past lover and all of that. We can acknowledge that and be like, oh, we don't want that in our lives. But when it comes to family, there's just like this weird um, standard of where there's like this sense of obligation to just accept it. And you know, you know that saying of being like, oh, you only have one set of grandparents. I guess technically you can have more than one, but it's just like, you only have one set of parents, for example, you know, you kind of just, you're born, you only have like the same siblings that you're born with, um, just make it work. And I don't agree with that. Uh, just because it's, I mean, easier said than done, right? But I think it's extremely important that the people that we hold closest to in our lives, which for probably many of you guys is your family, you would logically want that to be your healthiest relationships. And if that's the relationships that you allow in your life of where, you know, you might have some family members that are gaslighting you or just making you feel lesser than or speaking over you, and that's what you're constantly exposing yourself around, that's what you will accept. And not only that, you have a lesser sense of self when it comes to the emotional side, when it comes to that sensitive, childlike innocence, right? Because that's the family, right? That's what you were raised off of. And that's what kind of like associated throughout your entire lifetime, I would assume. And it's because of this, um, it's just, it will be draining after a while and it starts affecting the relationships in your life. And that's what happened to me. And I came to that realization shortly after <laughs> January hit of how the relationships that I've allowed in my life from family and the behaviors that I've allowed and just excused and didn't hold people accountable, it was starting to bleed out into the people that I held closest to me. And here's the thing. I've always had, I don't know about any of you guys, maybe again, like I feel like I'm, this is a lot more relatable than I think it might be, but I've always had a fairly high sense of self-worth in the sense that, um, like, I guess I don't, I, I do, I do, when it comes to just like people in my life, it's just like, a, I do demand a certain level of respect because I'm giving that respect to you. Whether it's in the comments, honey, or whether it's in person to person interaction, the number one thing that I will always hold people to is the same level of respect that I'm giving you. And because I'm confident in what it is that I'm providing to you, I kind of just expect that in return. If I'm not getting that, then it's just like out the door. But the thing is, and I, this is where I was always so confused about this, is that I have such a high sense of self-worth from the, uh, we'll just say public um, perception, right? And I say public perception, not off of like a platform, just like general public, right? People that you just don't know or don't know that closely. But when it comes to our personal relationships, because of the behaviors that we allow from the per people closest to us since we were children, if we allow that, that's a different level that's a different layer of um vulnerability of personality of just your being and so where i was struggling for so many years you guys so many years like i didn't this is such an aha moment for me was that because i like i didn't associate that um the differences or that there was a clear distinction between the self-worth that i have for the general public view and the self-worth that i have for my personal emotional life and this goes in out, off into just other so many other branches which i'm sure you can imagine and hopefully this gives you an aha moment but it was just like when i would like allow people into my life that weren't family whether it was like friendships and all of that uh, there was like this level of insecurity that I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I would not want to talk to people because I felt bad or insecure in the sense that I felt like I was wasting their time. I felt as if they didn't want to talk to me and I didn't want to, I always would frame the conversations in a way of ending it so myself, so that way I wouldn't have to feel bad about wanting to continue a conversation with someone that I really cared about having a conversation with, and then feel bad about the rejection if they didn't want to actually talk to me, which is always something in my brain. And I'm just like, why am I feeling this way when I know for a fact I'm a pretty enjoyable person to talk to, <laughs> right? When it comes, like, that's the one thing you, I have the most confidence in myself about is that 
I know that I'm a really funny person and I'm just really interesting. Whether you've been in my life for a long time or not, whether friendships are still going and not going anymore, I can go say with a complete confidence that uh, the people that I've had in my life, whether they're there or not anymore, I've made an impact in that. In that. And so I would have these thoughts when it would come to like my personal life and I just never would understand why. And then I had an individual who I was keeping in contact with for almost a year now. Uh, and this individual, uh, bless their heart, I'm sure they are just such lovely people. I never got a chance to even figure it out. But I was dealing with this individual since last year. And I would constantly try to have a conversation with them. I would try to connect with them on some type of personal level. Whenever they would ask me anything, I would be very thorough with my responses. I would just be very, like, just open, right? And every single time I would communicate with them, uh, I, not that I had any sense of insecurity in terms of communicating with them, but it was more so the behaviors that I allowed after the fact. It was the behaviors that this individual would exude in the things that this be, uh, individual would say that I would always have to like or just not do that I would always have to give the benefit of the doubt for him. So I'll use the example they would ask how I was doing and I would be like oh yeah I'm doing good. We get into like um, a potential like thought-provoking conversation and then either they just would just not respond for weeks and then as like pretend like we didn't even have the conversation or they would switch the subject over into some type of basically trying to just <laughs> be a clout goblin and try to just use my platform in some type of way or just getting my insight but not actually <laughs> you know being interested in me as a person it was basically like a poor man's attempt at a business connection but more manipulative just because it was like a pretending to care and so uh because i had like this uh weird sense of like uh, self-worth when it comes to the emotional side I would see these red flags and then I would either can like blame it on myself and be like oh like I'm just I'm just having like my own issues right it's a projection or and I would just give the benefit of the doubt to this individual and be like no truly they truly didn't mean to just be this blatantly disrespectful to me they truly didn't just ask how I was doing just to wrap the conversation around to talking about them and talking about their projects and how I could help them with their projects truly that just no there's no way right I always would just associate it with being a problem with me and I always thought it was a problem with me because of the like the family that I would have in my life when I was a child and I just was built off of just being constantly gaslit, whether it was intentional or not, because again, I had this childlike view of the adults in my life and just thinking the world of them and not seeing them as the, the uh, broken individuals that we all are. I gave them the benefit of the doubt and just assumed that they tried their best and it wasn't from a place of neglect. They tried their best and it wasn't from a place of just not liking me. And so, with I had all this and I was projecting it onto this person and I didn't realize it for months I would constantly just give the benefit of the doubt uh constantly just like be off and on like every like maybe once a month constantly would just be messaging me same thing rinse and repeat never like a like never had did we have like a full-on conversation <laughs> like it was always just incomplete um the only conversations that were actually complete were again stuff to do with business and so fast forward, right? Uh, I got a text from them in January, uh, basically like the same thing, but this time they were just like, hey, um, they start out the conversation asking how I was doing the same kind of spiel. And then without even responding to how I was doing, it was just like an instant being like, oh, hey, love for you to listen to this. And if you enjoy it, then definitely we can do something to collab and <laughs> what have you. And at this point, I was just like, huh, like I was finally starting to be fed up by it. And I started realizing it because I was art. I just went through the awareness, self-awareness of what was going on with my family life and all of that. And so when I saw this, I was like, mm, let me give this one more chance, right? Let me give it the benefit of the doubt, right? Because for my position, this person wanted to have me listen to their stuff and 
which is over an hour long, and then think of ideas for them to do to collaborate with me so they would benefit off of my platform. And it was, I was just like, there's no way, man. There's no way that they uh, intended to be this disrespectful and this just truly just didn't respect me at all. And so I gave the benefit of the doubt. I was like, you know, um, we'll love to do it sometime. Let me know. Um, I'll listen to it and I'll let you guys know. And I also gave them the chance. I was like, let me know if y'all come up with anything uh, or if you had any ideas. Because normally if you want to work with somebody, right, you kind of have an idea of what it is that you want to work on. Presumably, right, if you actually enjoy their content. Didn't get a message at all for the rest of the day. At this point, I was like, okay. The next day, I got a message from them just being like <laughs> something along the words of being like, yeah, we just for sure, man, we just love what you do. We love what you do. And if anything that we do could help what you do, that would be lovely or something along those lines. And I was just like, okay, this is, this is they don't even know like what I do. Like, what do you, you know, it was very obvious that they don't actually, they're not interested in whatever it is that I do because it's not hard. Like, it was just super condescending and just showed that they just didn't care. And I just didn't respond. At this point, I was just like, you know what? I'm trying to like <laughs> rise above, you know, and just trying to just keep it moving. So I didn't respond for, I didn't respond to that text and just life went on. And then I got a text message again from them. I think it was like last weekend. And this is where I realized that I needed, I had, I was presented with a choice. Because then they messaged me, not even a hello or how are you doing this time. This time, the mess the red flag was even more present. It was almost as if the lesson um, really needed to just be drilled in. And like, I wasn't going to get it unless it was just really drilled in. And at this point, the message that I got wasn't even asking how I was doing. Nothing like that. It was in fact, <laughs> how do I put this? It'd be like the message that I got, y'all, would be as if like, you know how I go through my usual spears, spiels with my tarot where I'm just like, I'd love for you to give me a like, subscribe, comment, da 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 da. That's essentially what I got as a text message being like, oh, hey, can you do me a favor, man? Do all this for my project and that's it. You know, not a how are you doing? N n none of that. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, it was just such a present moment. I was just like, wow, like, this is literally what I invited into my life. I can't be upset by this because... I allowed this type of awful behavior uh, <laughs> into my life, this pathetic behavior in my life for this long now. I can't expect them to treat me any differently because I never vocalized that being much of a problem because I gave them the benefit of the doubt because that's always what I would do for the personal people in my life, right? So I was presented with a choice and I think it's very important for everybody, everyone to think about this. Uh... How I would always, you know what I said before about initially at the beginning of this video where I was just like, um, I thought I, I couldn't figure out why I was still having like this trauma, PTSD and stuff with issues that I thought I overcame. The thing is, just like before, I didn't hold those family members accountable for, or the people in my life, the adults in my life at the time accountable. I never got to fully have closure in it because I gave them the benefit of the doubt and I didn't get closure on it until after the fact, until I kind of was a little bit more forward about it. And so I was presented with a choice with this individual to either one, just block them and just keep it moving, right? Which is usually my go-to. I usually just don't engage people. It's just like, once I'm done, I'm done. I'm not trying to, you know, back in my past, like a couple of years ago, I used to be very... <laughs> When I'm hurt, it's usually for a good reason. And once I'm hurt, I will lash out. And so it definitely is not rainbows and sunshine whenever I'm upset. Y'all say that you don't, like, I'm a Libra Scorpio cusp, right? And I know some of you guys, so many of you guys are just like, oh, like, I don't see where there's any type of Scorpio, honey. Whenever, whenever I'm upset, I, it's a completely different side. I get aggressive. And so there was that option, but I knew I wasn't going to get closure. And then the other option was to actually say something. And <laughs> it was a choice that I knew I needed to make. And I knew which choice I needed to make just in terms of my own growth to really put a close to this chapter, hopefully, um, when it comes to this lesson. And I chose to say something. I chose to kind of just call the behavior out in a sense. 
and that, you know, I was just like, this isn't, this isn't fulfilling to me. You know, I don't like, a, I don't like maintaining connections because I'm not going to call it a friendship because it wasn't. I don't like maintaining connections in my life when there isn't a mutual respect. And, you know, it went into, it wasn't that long of a thing, but it was basically that. It's just like, oh, I don't enjoy doing this. There isn't mutual respect. And I blocked them. And after that, that was just such a, it was such a nice moment. It was such an empowering moment for me, you guys, because it, it was through this, I, I truly just felt through me saying it and me, me being able to just say, it's just like, hey, I don't like this treatment. I don't like this behavior being done to me. I can acknowledge it in my brain and be like, oh, this isn't okay. But the very fact that I took a stand, that I uh, used my voice finally and held someone accountable no, I didn't have a conversation. I didn't need to converse with them because I don't need, I don't care. I truly don't care. <laughs> you know, I don't need to hear their insight or anything like that. I've wasted enough time trying to connect with someone that clearly just didn't want to be my friend and just wanted to use me. You know, I didn't care. I got to say my piece, which is something I've never been able to do for people that I hold close in my life, right? Or like the, uh, not the general public side of things, right? For people that I actually want to open up to and just you know, allow into my circle. So being able to do that was just such an empowering moment for me. It was such an aha moment for me being like, oh, I, it's okay for me to use my voice. It's, it's almost, dare I say, necessary to speak your truth because if you don't speak your truth, then it's like that inner child of yours is always going to just be blocked off it's always going to just be suppressed in some type of way and it starts affecting so many other aspects of your life that you're not aware of and so i truly 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 hope that in this video that in me talking about what it is that i'm going through you guys that you reflect on this as well because it was such a powerful moment for me you guys it's such a powerful moment and it's still something i'm still trying to um fully process in that just demanding a demanding respect and being okay with it not feeling insecure about it um you know and maybe maybe this is something this is common knowledge for everybody else but i just never realized i never realized that there was like a distinct difference between like the self-respect that i have for just general public and the general eye and the self-respect that i have for the personal side of me and when i realized that and i realized that i needed to start treating them separately so i could fully address like the issues behind like the personal side it was it was life-changing and it's like and i'm so happy that i got to experience this at the beginning of this year just because it's like i'm really excited you guys of seeing like what comes of this i'm really excited to see the higher level or the higher standard of people that start coming into my life now. Did my cat just fall? It did. <laughs> the higher standard of people that start coming into my life and that I start attracting in my life. Um, I think it's just so important to, because that's, here's the thing. I feel like we, and you know, some people have like a, like a past relationship that they do this with or totally whatever, right? I feel like this, we're all guilty of seeing red flags in people and it's not that we don't see them. It's that you give the benef uh, benefit of the doubt and not that you shouldn't give the benefit of the doubt to people, but you shouldn't, you want to make sure you're giving the benefit of the doubt, not from a place that's doing you and your energy injustice because it, <laughs> it, it, it affects you more than you know. And take it from someone like me who wasted so much time, so much time giving the benefit of the doubt, whether it's, I don't even know why I would either. I think part of it is where it's like, I kind of believe because I just believed that no one wanted to talk to me, right? Because there's a certain level of that or because, you know, there's just certain, a certain standard of where, you know, of what I thought was worthy. And I had to realize that what I thought was worthy of myself from the personal side um, was on a much lower level than the level of worthiness that I have from the general public eye, right? For how the, you know, how I will speak to people at the workplace and stuff like that is just so different. And so definitely let me know if you guys are able to relate to this in any type of way. 
Um, and it's such a huge lesson for me. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I really appreciate you guys allowing me to talk about this because it's just, mm, I hope it's as big of an impactful of a lesson as it, it, for you guys as it was for me. Um, yeah. So for you guys, like, let me know, let me know how, if you come to this realization with people, if you deal with people still in your life that like, uh, weigh you down in some type of way and just let me know why I'm not asking from a place of a uh, condescension, but I'm genuinely curious as to why people will allow certain people in their lives, even if they can acknowledge them, it doesn't make them feel that good. And I kind of asked this one, just because I'm curious, but two, I think when you take yourself out of the situation and you actually think about it finally, because I feel like a lot of us don't think about the relationships in our life and what we allow and like, because it's just such a natural occurring of things uh, and sometimes subtle. Once you start thinking about it, then it's just like, well, wait a minute, I guess that does sound kind of silly, huh? So I really do appreciate you guys allowing me to babble. And if you haven't heard it today, I see you, I hear you, and I love you so much. Bye guys.